Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let Hallelujah. us pray. Our Lord in heaven, we thank you. We worship you for today. Thank you for the privilege of being in your presence. Thank you for your mercies. Lord, we pray you take our praises in Jesus' name. As we enter into your gates with thanksgiving and praises, you would accept our praises in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. God's own word 
Satan took a hold of me, but Jesus came and set me free on the cross of Calvary. Oh, praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! For we have the Bible, it is God's own word. Satan took a hold of me, but Jesus came and set me free on the cross of Calvary. Oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. For we have the Bible, it is God's own word. Satan took a hold of me, but Jesus came and set me free. On the cross of Calvary, oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, God's own word, Satan took a hold of me, but Jesus came and set me free, on the cross of Calvary, oh, praise the Lord. Messiah is the King of Kings. Messiah is the Lord of Lords. Messiah. Messiah, Messiah is the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Jesus must be honored in my life every day. God must be honored, must be honored, must be honored. Jesus must be honored in my life every day. Hallelujah. Jesus must be honored in my life every day. All the way to Calvary, he went for me. He went for me, my Savior went for me. All the way to Calvary, he went for me. He died to set me free. Hallelujah. Jesus went for me, my Savior went for me, all the way to Calvary, he went for me, he died to set me free, all the way to Calvary, he went for me, my Savior went for me, he went for me. All the way to Calvary, he went for me. He died to set me free. Lift up Jesus, he is King of Kings. Lift up Jesus, he is Lord of Lords. Lift up Jesus, he is King of Kings. 
King of kings and Lord of lords, alleluia. Lift him high, King of kings. He is Lord of lords. Lift up Jesus. He is King of kings, King of kings and Lord of lords, alleluia. Up, Jesus he is Lord of Lords. Lift up, Jesus he is King of Kings, King of Kings, and Lord of Lords. Our hands. Lift up, Jesus he is King of Kings. Lift up, Jesus he is Lord of Lords. Lift up Jesus, he is King of Kings, King of Kings, and Lord of Lords. My God is able, is able, I know he is able, I know my Lord is able to carry me through. My Lord is able, is able, I know he is able. I know my Lord is able to carry me through. My Lord is able, is able. I know he is able. I know my Lord is able to carry me through. As the broken hearted and set the captives free, he healed the sick. Raised the dead and walked upon the sea. My God is able, is able. I know he is able. I know my Lord is able to carry me through. My Lord is able, is able. I know he is able. I know my Lord is able to carry me through. For he has healed a broken heart, he sets the captives free. He healed the sick, raised the dead, and walked upon the sea. My Lord is able. Is able. I know my Lord is able. Praise the Lord. My God is able to carry me through. What about you? My God is able to carry me through and is able to carry you through. And by the grace of God, he's going to carry us through in Jesus' name. God bless you all. I want to welcome everyone to the Revival Heart tonight in Jesus' name. God bless you all, every one of us in the church. And those of you online, the Lord bless you. You're all welcome in Jesus' name. We thank the Lord for bringing us together once again tonight since we left for the retreat last week, Thursday. And we thank the Lord for the wonders of the cross and the power of resurrection that we have all experienced. And my prayer is that what we have experienced will not live our life in Jesus' name. The power of the Lord will keep on manifesting our lives. And tonight, we're going to experience more of his power in Jesus' name because God is not tired of blessing us. As we are not tired of receiving from him, he will still bless us once more tonight in Jesus' name. God bless you all. You are all welcome in Jesus' name. The favor of the Lord, the power of the Lord will continue in our lives and in our families in Jesus' name. Now, if you are just coming across us for the first time, and this is the Palai Bible Church, Burlington, New Jersey. And by the grace of God, in this church, we meet three times in a week. We come together on Sunday for the Sunday worship service uh, from 9 o'clock every Sunday morning uh, for our, our worship service. I want to encourage you, come along with us, and the Lord will bless you abundantly in Jesus' name. On Mondays, we meet for the Monday Bible study at 6.30 p.m. every Monday uh, for the Bible study. It's always very rich and systematic study of the Word of God. Join us this coming Monday, and the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. On Thursdays, just like as we're here right now, we meet for the Thursday Revival Hour and Evangelism Training Service. It's always time that we are always being revived. We pray and the Lord always answers our prayers. And God also bless us through his word. Uh, so please join us for this meeting also. 
God will bless you in Jesus' name. And then we meet on Wednesdays for the prayer meeting. I will always pray on our needs, on our requests. I send in your requests. We'll be praying on them. And by the grace of God, you will have testimonies in Jesus' name. God bless you all. All these wonderful meetings are designed for our spiritual growth. And by the grace of God, the Lord will bless you abundantly as you come along with us in Jesus' name. I want to remind you that uh, by the grace of God, uh, next week, the Global Crusade will be starting. So let's get ready. Uh, the Lord will bless us abundantly in Jesus' name. Sorry, in two weeks' time, that's the upper Tuesday, the Global Crusade will be starting. And Thursday, and the Lord will bless you as you come in Jesus' name. Uh, come along with us. Uh, let's get ready. It's going to be wonderful. And the Lord will bless you abundantly as you come along with us in the name of Jesus. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Let's bring out whatsoever I want to offer to the Lord as we pray on them now. Let's bring out our tithe and our offerings. Give them up as we pray on them now. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you because you are the great provider. Out of the abundance you have given to us, we are above this to you. Father, we pray it to be acceptable in Jesus' name. And in return, bless everything we lay our hands upon to do in Jesus' name and prosper us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because we know you have answered our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's open our eyes. God bless you as you give in Jesus' name. For everyone online you want to give, I look at the cash app information on your screen. And through that, you can give to the Lord in Jesus' name. As I said earlier, uh, the program will be starting on the 28th, which is next week, Thursday. So don't forget, next week, Thursday, we started the global crusade. And God will bless you abundantly in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Let's close our eyes as we go to the Lord in prayers. I want you to bless the name of the Lord tonight and say, Father, we thank you because of your faithfulness. Thank you because you are so good unto us. Let's open our mouth and worship the Lord and give glory to him, our Father in heaven, who has been so good unto us. Let's thank the Lord for the faithfulness of God. Let's rise up wherever we are. We're in the section of prayers right now. We want to bless the Lord and say, Father, thank you. Glory be to you for your faithfulness. Thank you because you're worthy of our praise. Shall we lift him high tonight? Let's bless the name of the Lord. Let's give thanks unto him. He is worthy of our praise. Open your mouth and worship the Lord. Thank him. The Lord is kind. The Lord is merciful. The Lord is great. The Lord is powerful. Tonight, we are here to worship him and give glory to him. And let's experience his power in our midst tonight as we worship him with all our heart. I want you to lift up Jesus, glorify his name, honor him and adore him and appreciate him in your life, in your family. You will see that God is wonderful. And look at the wonders the Lord has been doing in your life. The protection, preservation, his help, his provision upon your life. Why not you praise his name? Why not you adore him? Why not you bless the name of the Lord and glorify him and say, Father, I thank you. Father, I worship you. I bless your name. You are worthy to be praised. Thank him for the life he has given unto you. For making you to be alive today It's a privilege, my brothers, my sisters. Why not you appreciate God and say, Father, I thank you for the life you have given unto me. Thank you for preserving my life. Thank you for keeping me alive in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and worship the name of the Lord. Give glory to him for the life he has given unto you. The life he has given unto each and every one of us is the life of God in Christ Jesus. Shall we open our mouth and worship him? The life he has given to us that now we could see the light and we came and the Lord restored us. God himself reconciled us back to himself through the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. We that were once a sinner over there running away from God he brought us. His mercy found us. And here we are in his presence, enjoying the blessings of the Lord and the benefit of the cross. Shall we open our mouth and worship the name of the Lord? All oh, the love that sought us, all oh, the blood that bought us, all oh, the grace that brought us to the fold. Wondrous grace that brought us to the fold. And that is what we're enjoying. The grace of God. The grace of God that has brought salvation to us that has helped us to realize our sinful state. And then we come to Calvary. And here we are in his presence, 
enjoying what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us. Shall we open our mouth and appreciate God tonight? Let's bless his name and say, Father, thank you for what you have done for me. Thank you for what you have done for each and every one of us online and those of us in the church. God is good and is worthy to be praised. To him be the glory in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. I want you to tell the Lord that, Lord, as I'm here tonight, bless me in the name of Jesus. And the Lord will bless you. I want you to present yourself before the Lord tonight and say, Father, I come to your presence. Today is a day of revival. I want you to revive me, spirit, soul, and body in the name of Jesus. Let my spirit be revived in the name of Jesus. Revive my soul, revive my body in the name of Jesus. And the Lord will revive you in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and pray and tell the Lord, if you discover that you are getting far away from the Lord, you need this revival tonight to draw you closer to God, to make your life beautiful than it has ever been before. Open your mouth and pray. If you discover that in your body, something is weighing you down, like as if you are sick in your body, the Lord will heal you tonight in Jesus' name. You have come into the presence of the Lord, the great healer, and you have come to his presence of the, the Lord, I am that I am, and is able to touch you physically and touch your life and heal you in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. If you discover that your spirit is going down, the desire, the enthusiasm to serve the Lord and to do his will is no more vain. This is the hour of revival. And the Lord will revive you, spirit, soul, and body tonight in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Bible says, I read from the book of Jeremiah 29 verse 11. It says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. That is what the Lord has said concerning you, concerning me and every one of us tonight. We want to pray and tell the Lord and say, Father, the thought of peace will surely come to pass in my life in Jesus' name. Nothing can stand against it. Therefore, I release myself, O Lord, to your thought of peace for my life in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray and commit yourself into the hands of the Lord. Tell the Lord, Father, I release myself, O Lord, to your thought of peace in the name of Jesus. Because the thoughts you have for me, O Lord, is a thought of peace and not of evil. Commit yourself into the hands of the Lord. You are a peaceful father. You are a loving father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, Heavenly Father, I release myself to your thought of peace. In the name of Jesus, let peace occupy my life. Let peace be in my heart. Peace in my family. Peace in our church. Peace in our country. Peace all around me. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and claim your 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 your. your your peaceful power that the Lord has prepared for you. Open your mouth and claim the preservation and the provision of peace that the Lord has prepared for you. Tonight, receive it. It is yours in Jesus' name. The thought of God towards you. Open your mouth and pray. If you discover that all around you, you are not experiencing that peace, tell the Lord tonight, your thought for me is a thought of peace. In the name of Jesus, not of evil, to give me an expected end. If you discover in your body, there is no, we are feeling discomfort in your body. Open your mouth and pray tonight and say, Father, your thought towards me is a thought of peace, not of evil, not for sickness, not for discomfort, to give me an expected end. In the name of Jesus. Therefore, I claim the, the thought of God for my life tonight. Oh Lord, I declare your thoughts for me. The thoughts of peace. Peace in my house. Peace in my heart. Peace at my job. Peace at my school. Peace everywhere I go. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray and tell the Lord. Claim the peace of God for yourself. In the name of Jesus, the Lord has not promised you evil. He has not promised you sickness. He has not promised you dejection, rejection. He has not promised you limitations. He has not promised you failure in life. Open your mouth and pray and say, Father, tonight, I claim my, uh, I claim my position and my right in you because I know that the thought you have for me is a thought of peace, not of evil, to give me an expected end in the name of Jesus. Therefore, tonight, I stand in the place of prayer. I come to you, O Lord, I pray. I claim your thoughts for my life in the name of Jesus. Your thoughts for my children, your thoughts for my wife. If you are praying for your husband, claim the thought of the Lord for your husband. It is of peace, 
not of evil, to give you an expected end. Therefore, receive the expected end of peace. Receive the expected end of joy and happiness and favor into your life tonight in the name of Jesus. Anything contrary to that is not the will of God. It's not the thought of God towards you. Open your mouth and pray tonight and say, Lord, according to your word, your thought of peace for my life, I possess it. Your thought of peace for my family, I claim it. Your thought of peace for my children, I possess it. I claim it for them in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray and tell the Lord that the Lord will give you peace. As you go out, you will experience peace. As you come in, you will experience peace. Everywhere you go, the peace of God will abide with you because that is a thought of God for you. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray. Don't settle for failure. Don't settle for discomfort. Fault. Don't settle for, for things that is bringing on unrest, that is giving you no heart, almost heartache, heart attack every day, no peace, no joy. Don't settle for that. Open your mouth and claim the thoughts of God for your life. It is to give you peace and your expected end, joy unending, peace uninterrupted, fever beyond measure. That is what you want God to give to you. Healing, good health, everywhere you go, open your mouth and pray and success in life. Commit yourself into the hands of the Lord. The thoughts of God towards you is of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. Possess your possessions tonight. In the name of Jesus, that is the plan and the purpose of God for you. Anything contrary to that, stand in the place of prayer. Open your mouth and pray and claim your, claim your right in the Lord. Pray in, the, in, the, in, the, in, in faith. Pray in the authority that God has given to you in the name of Jesus and you will have peace in your heart, in your life, in your family. You will have peace in the name of Jesus. Are you praying tonight? Open your mouth and pray. Commit yourself into the hands of the Lord. Claim your place, your position in the name of Jesus. You are a child of God. Your father is in heaven. You are not an orphan. Open your mouth and pray. You have the heavenly father who watches over you and takes care of his own children. Any discomfort in your body, in your life, commit yourself into the hands of the Lord. The thought of God towards you is the thought of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end in the name of Jesus. Tonight, what are your expected ends? What are you expecting from the Lord? And say, Father, all I want from you is joy, is success, is progress, is breakthrough, open doors, favor, good job. So in, in the name of Jesus, peace in my family, peace for my children. What are you expecting from the Lord? Why not to pray and tell the Lord? That is the plan of God for you, to give you peace all the days of your life. Not for you to be suffering and be, and be agonizing in pain. No, that is not the will of God for you. Commit yourself into the hands of the Lord, agonizing in pain, either emotional pain or physical pains in your body. Pray and resist them. Pray and reject them because that is not the thought of God for you. Open your mouth and commit yourself into the hands of the Lord. And say, Father, I come to you tonight. Oh Lord, let your will be fulfilled in my life. Your thought towards me is the thought of peace, not of evil, to give me an expected end. And you will receive that in the name of Jesus. The expected end you want from the Lord will come to you tonight as to pray and you commit yourself into the hands of the Lord. The Lord will grant it unto you in Jesus' name. Shall we commit ourselves into the hands of the Lord? Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. The Lord has the power to bring it to pass. His will, his purpose for your life. And by the grace of God, he will surely fulfill it in your life in Jesus' name. As you pray and you seek his face faithfully, he will bless you and he will answer your prayers in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we pray. A louder amen. The thoughts of the Lord for peace in your life will come to pass in Jesus' name. Any negative thoughts contrary to the peace of God, you cancel it. Reject it tonight. It's not your portion in the name of Jesus. And the Lord will grant you your expected ends in Jesus' name. Why don't you open your mouth and bless the name of the Lord and say, Father, I believe you have answered my prayers tonight. I worship you, Lord. I bless you. Thank you, Father, because you are a gracious God. You are a loving Father. 
you are thinking about me and about each and every one of us. Oh Lord, thank you. You are thinking about us every day and you have a good thought towards us. Peaceful thought towards us to give us an expected end. Lord, we pray this will be fulfilled in our lives in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we pray. Father, we thank you tonight. We bless your name for your faithfulness upon our lives. I pray, Lord, tonight as we have prayed, hear us, answer our prayers, and let your will be fulfilled in our lives in Jesus' name. Your thought for us will surely come to pass, and we're going to experience the peace of God all the days of our lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because you believe it is done. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you all. Shall we all be seated? God bless you all in Jesus' name. As we pray, have faith in your prayers. Believe the Lord. And by the grace of God, you will have testimonies in Jesus' name. When you know the plan and the purpose of God for your life, anything contrary to that, don't accept it. Don't just sit down and relax and say, well, maybe this is what God wants for me. No. Look at the scriptures. You will see the will of God and the purpose of God for your life. And by the grace of God, as you seek his face and you pray, he will answer you. He will bless you and you will do all he has planned concerning your life. His will in your life in Jesus' name. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Now we're going to go into the word of God. Before then, let's close our eyes as we pray. Say, Father, speak to me tonight from your word in the name of Jesus. Reveal yourself to me tonight and bless me abundantly in the name of Jesus. The Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Commit yourself into the hands of the Lord. Ask for his power. Ask for his presence. Ask for his spirit to reveal to you tonight the word of God. And say, Father, speak to me. Bless me abundantly from your word tonight in the name of Jesus. The Lord will bless you abundantly in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we pray. Father, we are asking that we'll open our eyes tonight as we go into your world. Reveal yourself to us and revive us, spirit, soul, and body in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name, pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Tonight, we're coming to the book of Job. Job chapter 37. I read verse 23. Wherever you are, open your Bible to the book of Job, chapter 37, verse 23. The Bible says, touching the Almighty, we cannot find him out. He is excellent in power and in judgment and in plenty of justice. He will not afflict. He will not afflict. We're talking about the Almighty God tonight. As you have seen it from the book of Job, it says, if you are talking about the Almighty, we cannot find him out. Because he is a righteous judge. He will always do right. And he knows his thoughts towards his own children. Those who he has called out of sin into this marvelous light. And he has brought them into his presence for a purpose. When he brought us to his presence, he wants to bless us. He wants to re prepare us and get us to where he has prepared for us through his only begotten son. And that is why he brought us into the kingdom. So that he can bless us in this world and then eventually meet with him, have fellowship with him when we get to heaven. So, when you are talking about God the Almighty, is a powerful God. That is what the scripture is revealing to us tonight. It says, when you are talking about God, touching the Almighty, we cannot find him out. He, he is excellent in power. When somebody is excellent in power, you see, People of this world, yes, they have power. But do you know their powers have limitations? Maybe they, they can only exercise their authority within just their own territory. They can't go beyond their boundary. They can't go beyond their limit. If they are in power, maybe they voted them in into power. There's a time that they're going to vote them out or they resign. That is human power in this world. If they have the power of weapons, a time comes that in, the, in their life that they can't go beyond their limit. That it will get to a point they have to expire and leave this world. But when you talk about the almighty God, he is excellent in power. No limitations. 
no setbacks. Nothing can restrict him. Nothing can hold back his hand. Nothing can say you have exceed your time limit in this place. He is excellent in power. That is the God we're talking about tonight. The almighty God that has the power to create the whole world. That is able to do anything that human beings are incapable of doing. So, talking about this almighty God. He is excellent in power and in judgment. When you talk about his judgment, it's not a partial God. You see, in this world, the people of this world, if they are judges, sometimes they play favoritism. Sometimes they look at, well, who is nice, who pays a lot of money. Sometimes they are, imp sometimes they are partial. They want to help other person. They want to put other person down. That's the judge of this world. But when you talk about this great judge in heaven, the great God of heaven and earth, the Bible says is excellent in power and in judgment. His judgment is fear. His judgment is peaceful. His judgment is right. His judgment is according to what you deserve. And by the grace of God, he will always do right. He is the judge of all the earth. Talking about the almighty God who is excellent in power and in judgment and in plenty of justice. Plenty of justice. You can't even number them. How he has been so fair, so you no know, justifying his children, bringing them back and lift, lifting them up out of sin and bringing them into righteousness. How many can you count in this world that the Lord has reconciled back to himself those who have gone away to the place of you no know, you no know, to, to the, the place of the world and they were there roaming in sin and the Lord the great justifier you know brought them and you know, redeemed them set them free from the bondage of sin and brought them back to himself as many who is willing and he says Lord I come to you he will always forgive he will always pardon he will always say, welcome home. That is why he says that, whosoever come unto me, I will in no wise cast out. It's plenty in justice. And then the Bible says, he will not afflict. The almighty God will not afflict. Are there affliction in your life? Check. If there is no sin there, God will not afflict. Are there afflictions in your life? Check. If you are walking right, God will not afflict. Are there afflictions in your life? Check. If your heart is right with God, the Bible says, He will not afflict. It's a faithful God. It's a loving Father. It is the devil that afflicts people. It's the devil that tries to play games in people's life and bring afflictions and bring sickness and bring evil upon the people of God or people, or people of this world. But God is a righteous judge and the Bible says, He will not afflict. And tonight, by the grace of God, we're going to experience his power in our lives in Jesus' name. Talking about this God is great in power. He's excellent in power. And no one can be compared with him. That's why we're considering this message tonight. Experiencing the great power of the Almighty. Experiencing the great power of the Almighty. When you talk about the power of the Almighty... Is great. Great God. His power is so great, inexhaustible. His power is so mighty, he can do what human beings cannot do. Because God is great. God is powerful. And there is nothing that can be compared with him. God has power over everything and is excellent in power. Over everything in this world, he has power. And is a God of peace. Is a long-suffering God. And therefore, whatsoever man says, I can't do, I'm tired, this is my limit. God has power over everything. I've been to hurt the situation in this world, that people of this world who have the greatest power that they thought they have in this world, they are being controlled by the devil, being controlled by the spirits and the demons of this world. And they thought they don't want to die. They could not die. Eventually, where are they? They passed away. They had power that they could move anything that their hands want to move in this world. They are movers and shakers. 
Eventually, their time expires and then they have to go. They leave. And have you heard about people who can control millions? Or in this world, money, they have money. Position, they have position. They have a lot of authority in this world. Eventually, they leave all these things behind. But when we talk about God, he is great. He's omnipotent. He's infinite. He's much less and great indeed. Omnipotent, that means that God, he knows everything. He's all powerful. That nothing can be hidden from him. He knows the end from the beginning. It's infinite. God cannot be exhausted. You can't limit him. You can't box him in a test tube like you're performing an experiment. It's great. It's mighty. God is infinite. Nobody knows his end. It's from the beginning and it's going to be the end also. It's the alpha and omega of everything in this world. And when he says it's matchless, nothing can be compared with him. People of this world have tried they rose up idols, which they are serving. They compared that with Almighty God. Eventually, their idol turns against them because sometimes it fails them. And most times, they couldn't do what they expected him to do. But not our God. Our God in heaven, who is great in power, infinite, much less, can do great and wonderful things. So, tonight, the Lord is revealing himself to us. And I want you to remember that he has power over the nature. He has power over all his creature. Everything God has created, he has power over them. The sun, the star, the moon, the galaxy, the world, the wind, the sea, everything he has created, he has power over them. That is the God that we are serving. Tonight, you will see, you will experience the greatness the goodness, the might, and the power of the Almighty in your life in Jesus' name. And so, tonight, the Lord is reminding us that he has power to fulfill all his promises. You see, sometimes you have read the scriptures and you read about the promise of God for your life. You claim it to yourself. He will fulfill it in your life in Jesus' name. Those promises he has given to us in the scriptures, Look for the one that is applicable to your life, to your situation, to whatever you are going through. Apply them to your life. God is able to fulfill that promise in your life in Jesus' name. And he will do as he has said. He will not put you to shame and you will not be disappointed in Jesus' name. Almighty God, he has power to save. To save from sin. As many that come to him that are willing and they come repenting. They come submitting themselves to God. They come willingly, they surrender to him. He has power to save them from their sins and to make them to have dominion. God is able to do it. He has power to keep us from falling. You're falling, you're falling, you're falling. You don't know how to stand. The Lord has power to keep you from falling and keep you steady to be able to continue your journey and your race to heaven. As you commit yourself to his hand, he will keep you through in Jesus' name. The Almighty God has power to subdue. To subdue all those things that are limiting you. That are harassing your life. He has the power to subdue them. And to conquer them for you. God has the power. If you believe him. If you put your trust in him. He will subdue all your enemies in Jesus name. Sometimes they come at night when you are sleeping. Sometimes they even come during the day. They show themselves physically to you and say. As long as we are here. You cannot pass this boundary. You cannot go over beyond this line. God has power to remove them and make you to cross over to your possessions. He is able to do that. And so by the grace of God, as you believe him, he is able to subdue your enemies that are harassing your life, that want to inflict injury upon you, that want to frustrate your life. God is able to subdue them. God is able to deliver, to deliver you. From every oppression of the enemies. They oppress you at night. They oppress you in the day. They oppress you at work. They oppress you in your neighborhood. Wherever they are oppressing you. He has the power to deliver you from their hands. Whatever is the, the name. Whatever the nature. Whatever the, the power they say they possess. They might say they are the power that be in this world. And they are controlling you know, everywhere around you. They are demons. They are all whatever they have. God has power to deliver you from their hands. And then he also has power to make his grace abound towards you. You are asking God every day and say, Lord, 
in this journey, I need your help. I cannot go alone without you. He has the power to give you the grace you need at every junction of your life. And he says, Lord, help me. I don't know how to overcome this. I don't know how to carry on with these challenges. The Lord has power to give you the grace to overcome, to prevail. And he's able to make that grace to continue your life that will carry you through all your journey in this world. The Lord has power. And by the grace of God, you will experience his power in your life in Jesus' name. The almighty God has power to heal. Are you sick tonight? As you believe in him, you put your trust in him. You know that he's almighty. Whatever the sickness is, is able to heal you in Jesus' name. Many testimonies we have heard of the divine healing of the Lord. How the Lord has touched life. Those who are the verge of crossing from this world to the other side. And then the Lord, the power of the Lord showed up in their life. They, they have been revived to life again. Those who have been diagnosed and they have been time and say this one, you are forsaken. You are doomed. Get ready to leave this world, to go away, and then to pass on. And God showed up in their life. And then they are being restored, being revived. We have a lot of testimonies of divine healing of God, touching his people, healing them, those who are having sicknesses in their body. And they said, this one is incurable. Nobody can cure you. And the doctors have said, we have exhausted all our powers, all the knowledge we know upon your sickness. This one is spiritual. It's not ordinary. Bring it to God. To the Almighty. And by the grace of God, He will heal you in Jesus' name. He will deliver you and He will set you free in Jesus' name. He has power to provide. To provide for all your needs. All that you have been looking upon to God for. As you put your trust in Him, He makes ways where there seems to be no way. Look at the children of Israel. When they were coming from the land of Egypt and they were in the wilderness, they didn't know how food will come. But God rained down manna from above upon their life. He has power to provide for your needs. He gave them water. He gave them food. And the Lord protected them even in the wilderness. That terrible animals did not slaughter all of them. God has power to make available all your needs to bless you and to provide for you according to his riches in glory. To bless you even beyond your, 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 your expectations. He has power to answer all our prayers. Praise the Lord. Have you been praying? And you have requests you have been presenting before the Lord. He has the power to answer all your requests. Just take it to God in prayer. And commit yourself into his hands. And by the grace of God, when he shows up in your life, you'll be smiling and rejoicing in Jesus' name. Because he's going to turn your captivities around. And then he will lift you up and elevate you. And then place you in your right place. And all those who are terrorizing your life and disturbing your life. All those difficulties you don't know solution to. And you bring it to God in prayers. There will be solution in Jesus name. Divine solution. Solution that will be a lasting one. That will give you joy, unending peace, uninterrupted. All the days of your life, God has power. Let's begin to see the power of the Lord right from the beginning of the world. When he says, let there be, is the God of heaven and earth. There is nothing too hard for him to do. Let's go to the book of Genesis, chapter 1. The book of Genesis, he has power. We're experiencing a spy in our lives. You want to see how great our God is. He's a powerful God. He's awesome. He's great. And nothing can be compared with him. In the book of Genesis, chapter 1. I read verse 3. The Bible says, And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. Who else can do that? Nobody. When the earth was without form, and nothing was on earth, everything was dark, and the Spirit of the Lord moved upon the sea, upon the waters. And God said, In his mighty, in his powerful, in awesomeness. And he says, Let there be light. And there was light. Instantly. It has to respond because it's God that is speaking right here. And tonight, it will speak into your life in Jesus' name. Anywhere there is darkness, when it comes and it shows up through his word, through his servant, there will be light in Jesus' name. In your heart, is there darkness there? When God shows up and you come to him and you say, Lord, let your light shine in my life, in my heart. The light of God will shine there. And all the darkness will vanish away in Jesus' name. All the things that you are confronting, everything looks gloomy, 
dark, it looks like there is no hope. When God shows up in your life, you will see the radiant, the horizon, the light shining ahead of you, pointing you to the success, to the future, to where God wants you to be. The Lord will bring light into your life in Jesus' name. So right from the beginning, it declare, let there be light. And nothing can stand against that. And there was light instantly. That tells you how great our God is. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, Isaiah chapter 43, I read verse 13. The book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verse 13. The Bible says, Yea, before the day was, I am he, that is God. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will walk and who shall let it? That is God speaking. Before the day was, I am he. When you are still sleeping on your bed, God is still watching. He's watching over you. He's alive everywhere. Before you start planning for the day, God has been there ahead of you. Before you go to the bathroom, take care of yourself, shower, dress up, and you leave your house, God has been in charge. That is why every day you've got to commit your ways into his hands and say, Lord, you are the Alpha and the Omega. You know the end from the beginning. Therefore, I am starting the day with you. When you commit your ways into his hands, it will surely see you through in Jesus' name. It says, yeah, before the day was, I am here. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. There is none that can deliver out of my hand. We're talking about the almighty God. And then he says, I will walk and who shall let it? When he says, I will walk and who shall let it? If he has planned to deliver you, to set you free, no man can restrict him from doing that. If he has planned to open your eyes, if you are blind, no one can stop him and say, God, don't do that. He will surely fulfill his will in your life in Jesus' name. And so, whatever the Lord has planned to do in your life, like as we read today, it says he knows the thought it has towards us. It's a thought of peace and not of evil to give us unexpected hands. As you hold on to his word, you hold on to his promises, you believe him, you, you, or you follow him according with all your heart, and you are fulfilling his will. And by the grace of God, by the time he shows up in your life, no one can hinder him. No one can stop him. No one can ask him, what doest thou? He is the almighty and his powerful God in your life. You will be strong and great in Jesus' name. So tonight, brothers and sisters, the Lord is revealing himself to us. I want you to believe him tonight. Put your trust in the Lord. Believe that he's a powerful God and is great. He's awesome. He's almighty. And tonight, you will experience his great power in your life in Jesus' name. I'm going to briefly divide this story into three subheadings. Point number one. Acknowledgement of the power of God. The acknowledgement of the power of, of God. Point number two, the ability of the power of God. What God can do. The ability, the power of God. What God can do. Then the point number three, the awesomeness of the power of God. God is awesome. And therefore, nothing can be compared with him. He's a gracious father. Is loving God, and yet he knows what to do concerning your life. And by the grace of God, you will not be put to shame in Jesus' name. Let's see, how do we acknowledge the power of the Lord? You will need to know when he says, I will, and he declares himself from the beginning, and he says, let there be light, you will know truly God is great. You need to realize that. If you don't realize that, you will know how great God is and what God is can do in your life. Let's go back to the beginning again. The book of Genesis chapter 1. I start from verse 1. We need to acknowledge the power of the Lord. The power that made this whole world to come to existence. Look at it from verse 1. The Bible says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and, the, and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. In verse 3, And God said, 
let there be light, and there was light. Can you see God there? We need to acknowledge God in our lives. Everywhere you go, you see God around you. He's the one that brings everything into existence. Without him, there will be no world. You will not be anywhere today. But God said, let there be. And there was. And therefore, you need to realize that God is alive. And he dwells among his people. And he knows you. He knows your heart. He knows all about you. You can't hide from him. You've got to acknowledge that. You've got to know that and believe that God is right here with his own children. God has been from the beginning. He revealed himself to as many who have not known him. And those who have not realized him, those who have not known him, he revealed himself to them. And those who need to know him to be able to fulfill his will, he also revealed himself to them. Those who are thinking, is God alive? How can I find him? God reveal himself to them. Those who want, need, need to do his will to fulfill his purpose. He called them and revealed himself to them. Since I am God, I change not. That is the God that we're talking about tonight. And so by the grace of God, you will see him in your life in Jesus' name. In the book of Genesis, chapter 17, I read from verse 1. You need to acknowledge the power of the Lord, the power that brings the whole world into existence. Genesis chapter 17, verse 1. The Bible says, And when Abraham was 90, and 90, 90 years old and nigh, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. God appeared to him because there is something he needs to fulfill. There is something God wants to do through him. And he says, you got to walk before me and be thou perfect. I am the almighty God. The same thing he's telling you tonight. If you're hearing my voice, he wants you to walk before him and be perfect. We're talking about the almighty God. You can. You will. Because it's possible. If you think it's not possible, it's possible. If it's not possible, God won't tell you to do that. He wants us to walk before him and be perfect in verse 2. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations. God revealed himself to Abraham. He acknowledged his presence. He fell upon his face. He worshipped God. And God had covenant with him that this is purpose why he has called him and there is something he has to fulfill in his life. God revealed himself to him. He will reveal himself to you in Jesus' name. You will experience his touch, his love, his mercy, his greatness in your life even tonight in Jesus' name. Genesis 28, I read from verse 10, the book of Genesis, chapter 28, I read from verse 10. The Bible says, And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went towards Haran and alighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set and he took off the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed, and to thy seed, and thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, 
and thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south and in thee we and, and in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed and behold i am with thee and i will keep thee in all places whither thou goest and will bring thee again into this land for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. In verse 16, the Bible says, And Jacob awaked out of his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew not. He was on his journey. He was going, and the night was set, and he said, let me lay down and sleep here. While he used the stone as his pillow and he was sleeping, the Lord showed him he had a dream. And he saw a ladder from earth to heaven. God was on top of it. And the Lord spoke with him and revealed himself to him. And the covenant he had with Abraham, with Isaac, Jacob also received that same covenant. Because he is God, he had to reveal himself to Jacob, for him to know the purpose why he is alive. And by the grace of God, the Lord fulfilled what he has said. He said, I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. Whatever the Almighty God has told you, he will surely fulfill it in your life in Jesus' name. Remember, he's a covenant keeper. He will not forget all he has said concerning you Patiently follow him. Patiently obey his word. Do his will with all your heart. And all he has said concerning you, he will definitely bring them to pass in your life. Look at how he spoke to Abraham. Isaac went. Jacob came. Look at how he called Jacob again and revealed himself to Jacob while he was sleeping. The Lord will reveal himself to you in Jesus' name. As you dream, not oppression, but God will be speaking to you and giving you revelations in Jesus' name. A louder amen in Exodus chapter 14. We're talking about the Almighty God tonight. Acknowledgement of the power of God. You need to know how powerful our God is. It's great. It's mighty. It's wonderful. Exodus chapter 14. I read from verse 21. The Bible says, and Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. This was the children of Israel when they were going to the land of promise, and they left Egypt. They were at the Red Sea, and they wanted to cross. And the Lord showed Moses and said, Stretch forth your, the rod in your hand. And he did, as the Lord commanded him. And they went, you see, the Bible says, all through the night. Is the, east, the strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land and the waters were divided. Through that night, waters were divided. The sea became a dry land and they went over on a dry land until they crossed over to the other side. Now, verse 22, the Bible says, And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were all walled unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea. The Egyptians, when they were following them, they also went with them. They said, yes, we saw the Israelites, they are crossing to the other side. Let's follow them. Let's go and cross like they are crossing too. And then they joined them as they were crossing. What happened? God showed his power unto them. Revealed himself to them. The Bible says in verse 23, And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea. Even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. Verse 24. And it came to pass that in the morning world, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians. You see, when the morning was coming, 
And then it's like, you know, the day was about to set and the day was about, you know, coming up and to break. And then as the Lord looked and the Egyptians were following, they wanted to get through with the children of Israel to get to the other side with them. What happened to them? See what happened in verse 24. And it came to pass that in the morning world, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians. God himself troubled the host of the Egyptians, verse 25, and took off their chariot wheels and they drove them heavily. They drove them heavily so that the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel for the Lord fighted for them against the Egyptians. They themselves, they acknowledge that, that God is for, fought for Israel. And therefore, they realize that as they were going, their wheels, God was taking it out. So, because they drove them heavily and the wheels fell off their cart and they couldn't continue with that again. When they saw that, they knew that truly, this was God. And God was with the children of Israel because they knew God fought for them. God is mighty, but brothers and sisters, you need to acknowledge that. You need to know that God is great and is able to fight for you and defend you in every area of your life in Jesus' name. Those who have not experienced the power of God often doubt his greatness and his ability to do wonders in their lives. If you have not ever experienced God before, they, they doubt, they say, can that be? Because what they are thinking about is their own scientific knowledge, their own oh, common sense and what they think is logical to them. But God, nothing he can hold his hand. Nothing can stop him to fulfill his will in the life of his own children or whoever he wants to fulfill his will in their life. He's able to do what men cannot do. God is great. Can we all say that? God is great. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 36, I read from verse 1. We see considering the power of God. You need to know that. You need to know the power of the Lord. God is great. In Isaiah, chapter 36, I read from verse 1. Isaiah 36, from verse 1, the Bible says, Now, it came to pass... In the 14th year of King Ezekiah, that Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came up against all the defensed cities of Judah and took them. And the king of Assyria sent Rabsheke from Lachish to Jerusalem unto King Ezekiah with a great army. And he stood by the conduit of the upper pool in the highway of the fuller's field. And then he began to talk. He began to talk. He began to see a lot of things. Because, you no, know, this man, the king of Assyria, wanted to take over the land of Judah. He sent a servant to King Ezekiah and said, tell him that he cannot deliver himself. I'm going to take his land and I'm going to take everything from him. He began to just open his mouth and begin to speak, you know, Pouring out rubbish things, saying things that are not right. In verse 14, he says, Thus said the king, Let not Ezekiah deceive you, for he shall not be able to deliver you. Neither let Ezekiah make you trust in the Lord, saying, The Lord will surely deliver us. This city shall not be delivered into the hand of King Assyria. Can you see that? He said, Don't let Ezekiah deceive you, that this city will not be delivered. Into the hand of the Assyria, no, we are going to take it over from you. We are going to take, take it over from you. Your God cannot deliver you. But you know what? God answered them. All your enemies, the Lord will answer them in Jesus' name. Those who want to oppress you, those who want to you know, frustrate your life, the Lord himself will answer them in Jesus' name. In chapter 37, from verse 33, God answered them. Chapter 37, Isaiah chapter 37, from verse 33, the Bible says, Therefore, thus said the Lord, this is the response of God, thus said the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, 
he shall not come into this city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it. He says he will not come here, nor shoot arrow, nor come before it with shield, nor cast a bank against it. By the way that he came, by the same shall he return, and shall not come into this city. Share the Lord, for I will defend this city to save it for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. You see, for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord will fight for you in Jesus' name. Because he will remember how he died on the cross and he says, it is finished. Your yoke, your body, everything has been nailed to the cross. All your difficulties has been nailed to the cross. Your sickness was upon his stripes because he says, with the stripes we are healed. Everything has been nailed to the cross. And therefore, when the enemy is harassing your life, like this king of Assyria sent his servants in Rabshakel, said, tell Ezekiah that nothing can deliver him. I will destroy the city. God answered him. The Lord will answer all your enemies in Jesus' name. In any way, any area they have been harassing your life, he will answer them. And when he answers them, you know when God answered them. Your own response, you don't even need to answer them. Because if you answer them, you will answer them based on your fear, based on what you think, based on your own ability. But when the supreme power, the power of the almighty God, proved himself in your life and he answered your enemies, he will show them that is God. And he will answer them beyond your expectations in Jesus' name. So, God is powerful. They acknowledge the power of the Lord because God fought for Israel. He will fight for you in Jesus' name. Let's see the book of Daniel, chapter 3. I read from verse 14. The book of Daniel. Daniel, chapter 3. I read from verse 14. He will answer your enemies in Jesus' name. Daniel, chapter 3, from verse 14. The Bible says, Nebuchadnezzar. Speak and said unto them, Is it true? This is Nebuchadnezzar talking to you, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He said, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up. And he says in verse 15, This is a threat. Now, if ye be ready, that at the time Ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackball, satry, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music. Ye fall down and worship the image which I have made well. But if ye worship not, ye shall be cast into the same in, in ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning fairy furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you? Out of my hands. That was Nebuchadnezzar. He was also challenging God. Just like the king of uh, King Azira challenged God. Nebuchadnezzar was challenging God. He said, You, these children, these Hebrew children, you heard the music, you heard my order and my authority, and then you defy it. You didn't bow, bow down to worship my idol. Yes, if you refuse this second time, I will cast you into the lake of the into the fairy furnace fire. And who is that God? That can deliver you out of my hand. Was also asking who is that God that could deliver them. In verse 22, the Bible says, And says, therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king was astonished. He will be surprised in Jesus' name. He was astonished. He was surprised and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered him and said unto the king, True, O king, he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no heart, and the form of the fourth is like 
the Son of God. You see that? Christ came, Jesus came, and he was with his people in the midst of the fire. God answered him. He said, who is that God? And the Lord showed up. God will always show up in your life in Jesus' name. He will always show up for you in Jesus' name. Verse 26. Then the Nebuchadnezzar came near and to the mouth of the, of the burning fairy furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servant of the most high God, come forth and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth out of the midst of the fire and the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power. The fire of the enemy will not have power over your life in Jesus' name. Nor was an air of their head singled. Neither were their, were their coats changed. Nor the smell of fire had, had passed on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who had sent his angels and delivered his servant that trusted in him and have changed the kingdom, the king's word, and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Nebuchadnezzar acknowledged the great power of God as if that was enough. Eventually again, you know, he was so proud in chapter 4. He became so proud and then he was thinking about what he has accomplished, what he has done. And then the word of the Lord came to him and then eventually he found out that truly God is great. In chapter 4, verse 28, the Bible says, All this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of 12 months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for my for my for the house of king of for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? While the word was still, while the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O king Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee, and they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen. Seven times shall pass over thee, until thou knowest that the most I rule it in the kingdom of men, and he giveth it to whomsoever he will. And then exactly as it was said, it happened. In verse 33, the same hour, was the king, was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar, and he was driven from men and did eat grass as oxen, and his body was wet with view of heaven till his hair were grown like eagles, like eagles' feathers, and his nails like bird's claw. Verse 34. And at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven. And my understanding returned unto me, and I blessed the most high, and I praised and I and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. Eventually, he acknowledged God. He knows truly that God is alive. Everyone will know that God is living in you in Jesus' name. Because he will reveal himself to them by his, by his power. And they will know truly that God is alive. That will take us to our second subheading, the ability of God. It is when God said that will surely come to pass. Whatsoever God has not commanded will not come to pass in your life in Jesus' name. He has commanded you that you will live long. That you will have peace. That you will not die young. Also, what you need to do is to remember all that the Lord has said concerning you. That is why the Bible says in the book of Lamentation, chapter 3, Lamentation, chapter 3, the book of Lamentation, chapter 3, 
I read verse 37. It is what the Lord declared that will surely come to pass in your life. Lamentation chapter 3, verse 37. The Bible says, Who is he that said, and it cometh to pass when the Lord had commanded it not? Whatsoever the Lord has not commanded, and you believe the Lord and his word, it will not come to pass in your life in Jesus' name. But what the Lord has said concerning you, that is what will surely come to pass in your life. Is as you believe the word of God, so shall it be unto you in the name of Jesus. So, you've got to hold on to his promise. You've got to hold on to his commandment. You've got to hold on to all he has said concerning you. Don't just take no for an answer. Believe the word of God and hold on to it. When the enemy is coming and is trying to play games with you, you stand straight upon the word of God and claim the promise of God for your life. Don't allow the enemy to make you to feel like God is not alive. God is not powerful. God has power over everything in this world. You've got to believe that, acknowledge that, and know that God is able to do as he has promised. Everything he said concerning you, that is what will surely come to pass in your life in Jesus' name. A louder amen. In Isaiah chapter 14, I read verse 27. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 27. The Bible says, For the Lord of hosts at purpose, and who shall disallow it? And his hand is stretched out, and who shall turn it back? The Lord has purpose to bless you. Nobody can say no to it. Nobody can disannul it. His, out, his hands is stretched out. Nobody can withdraw his hand from him, can set it back. So, the Lord has purpose to bless you. He has the power to do it. He's able to do it. And he has the ability to do it in your life. And he will surely do it in you in Jesus' name. The Lord is able to do the impossible. He has the final say over everything. Think about your life. No man has the final say over you. It's the Lord God of heaven and earth that has the final say. So, if you don't allow the enemies to start making you to feel like, well, maybe they have the final say over my life and maybe they have the, the authority over you. No, they don't have authority. They don't have the final say. It is only God that has the final say over your life. So, when you believe on that God and you declare to yourself what you want, it is what you pray to God to you that he will answer. He will not leave you and then answer the will, the wish of your enemy over your life. No, you are his son, you are his daughter. And therefore, he listen to you, whatever you say will surely come to pass. But if you keep quiet, you can't tell God what you want. You can't declare for yourself what the Lord has said concerning your life. And you allow the enemy to be you know, ramping on your head and turning you around and playing games with you. And you sat down there crying and weeping. Stand up tonight and claim your right and your place. And the Lord will answer your prayers as you pray in Jesus' name. In Romans chapter 4, verse 21, the Bible says, And being fully persuaded that, that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Are you persuaded tonight? Do you believe the Lord tonight? He says, being persuaded that what he has promised, is able also to perform. God is able. Can we all say that? God is able. All he has said concerning you, it will surely bring them to pass in Jesus' name. And by the grace of God, you will not be put to shame in Jesus' name. It will surprise you. It will deliver you. It will help you. It will bless you according to his will in Jesus' name. In the book of Luke chapter 3, verse 8, the Bible says, The wind, Luke chapter 3, verse 8, As you hold on to his word, do not be put to shame in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 3, verse 8. The Bible says, Bring forth therefore fruit worthy of repentance and begin not to say within yourself, We have Abraham to our father, for I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. That means that 
what men ordinarily thought is not possible. God is able to do it. He's able. And by the grace of God, you will not be disappointed in Jesus' name. He's able to deliver. He's able to set free. He's able to answer your prayers. He's able to bless you. He's able to heal your sickness. He's able to deliver you. He's able to lift you up. He's able to bless you and to make your life beautiful than what you ever think it's going to be. And by the grace of God, you will experience that in Jesus' name. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 7, verse 25, God is able. The Bible says in Hebrews, chapter 7, verse 25, it says, Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Anyone that comes to him, he said, I will know what's cast out. He's able to save them, to deliver them, and to set them free. So as you come to him tonight, you will experience his power in your life in Jesus' name. Point number three. That's the last point we're going to consider. Uh, the awesomeness of the power of God. The Lord is awesome. Let's see his power declaring from the beginning of the world, showing how great he is and how powerful he is. In the book of Exodus chapter 3, I read from verse 1. Exodus chapter 3. I read from verse 1. The Lord called Moses. And he wanted to show him something so that he will know truly he is God. In the book of Exodus chapter 3, verse 1, the Bible says, Now, Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire. Behold, in a flame of fire, out of the midst of the bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not born. It was God. Why the bush was not born? It was God that revealed himself to him. The angel came and stood there in the midst of that bush, and the bush was burning, and it was not burned. It was not consumed. That tells you how great our God is. You can see the universe, the sky. Can you see the pole that suspended, that hold it to, to stand? No, it's God of heaven and earth that made it to stand. Look at the ground, the earth that stood up out of water. The Lord himself is in charge. As we are blowing, you know, the wind is blowing from east to west, from north to south. It is God that is in charge of everything. God is great. God is awesome. And therefore, there is no power on earth that can match the greatness of our God. He is awesome God. In the book of Psalm, chapter 33, I read from verse 8. Psalm 33, verse 8. Believe him tonight. Put your trust in him. He's able to help you, to deliver you, and to set you free. Psalm 33, from verse 8. The Bible says, let all the earth... Fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it was, and it stood fast. The Lord bringeth the counsel of the hidden to naught. He maketh the devices of the people of the people of none effect. The counsel of the Lord stand standeth forever. The thoughts of of his heart to all generations. It is the Lord who has done it. And his counsel stand out long forever. Forever. You see, it says, let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe before him. For he spake and it was done. Whatsoever he declares, it will be done in Jesus' name. Nobody can stop him. Nobody can hold his hands from performing all he has said concerning you. And so tonight, as you believe him, he will do everything, he will do everything perfectly well 
concerning your life in Jesus' name. God is a perfect God. And when he said, I will, nobody can hinder him. Nobody can stop him. And the Bible says, he will do everything that he has said concerning us, concerning you, concerning me. He's able to fulfill all he has said concerning us in Jesus' name. Before we pray, the book of Mark chapter 7, I read verse 37. Mark chapter 7, I read verse 37. The book of Mark chapter 7, verse 37. The Bible says, And we are beyond measure astonished, saying, he hath done all things well. He maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. He hath done all things well. That will be your testimony in Jesus' name. That he has done all things well. You look to the right, you see God. Your left, you see God. All around you, you see God. And all you could say, God, you have done all things well. When people thought that you would come out mourning, crying, weeping, being sorrowful, dejected, rejected, no hope, no success, no breakthrough, no future. And then you look around you. All they thought for you, it, the Lord turned it around. And then all you are seeing is progress, is breakthrough, joy, favor, happiness, open doors for you. You are making progress in your life. And then you can say, all you can say is that, God, thank you. He has done all things well. In your family, all things will be well in Jesus' name. In your life, all things will be well in Jesus' name. At your job, all things will be well in Jesus' name. In your studies, all things will be well in Jesus' name. Concerning your children, your son, your wife, your husband, he will do all things well in Jesus' name. Tonight, you will experience the great power of God in your life in Jesus' name. As you acknowledge it and you believe in it, that he has ability to do all he has said, you will experience his awesome power in your life in Jesus' name. Let's rise upon our feet as we go to the Lord in prayers. God is great. God is great. He has done all things well. He will do all things well in your life in Jesus' name. Why not to pray and commit yourself into the hands of the Lord and say, Father, I believe you, Lord. I know you are mighty. I know you are a powerful God. In my life, Lord, I come to you. Do all things well in the name of Jesus. Fulfill all you have said concerning me in the name of Jesus. And the Lord will do it. Recognize him tonight. Appreciate him tonight. He's a powerful God. Is the Almighty, and there is nothing too hard for him to do. Is the God of heaven and earth. Open your mouth and pray. And commit yourself into his hands. And say, Father, I believe. I believe that you are a mighty God. You are a powerful God. You have the ability to heal, to deliver, to set free. And you can take care of my life. You can deliver me. Those who tried you, and they asked you, and they said, who are you? You responded, you replied them. With your mighty power. Oh Lord, I am praying. Begin to tell the Lord. In any area you want the Lord to respond. In the name of Jesus. Is there any sickness in your life? Challenging God. Challenging his power. Tell the Lord and say, Father, arise, oh Lord. This sickness is challenging your power. This pain is challenging your power. This difficulty is challenging your power. And the Lord will show up in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray and commit yourself into the hands of the Lord. Nebuchadnezzar challenged God. The Lord showed up and he saw God. He saw the Lord, the Son of God, in the midst of the fire with the three evil children. The Lord showed himself to him. Open your mouth and pray. The king of Assyria challenged God. The Lord showed himself to him. Open your mouth and pray. What is that thing that is challenging the power of God in your life? Rise up tonight. Rise up and pray. And call upon God to defend you. When Pharaoh was challenging God, the Lord showed himself to him. Open your mouth and pray. Anything challenging God in your life, commit it into the hands of the Lord. Pray about it. That thing that is challenging God, don't sit down there and be crying. Call upon God. He's your deliverer. He's your defender. He will defend you. He will fight for you. 
It will help you. It will support you. It will lift you up. Open your mouth and pray. Commit yourself into the hands of the Lord. Something in your life challenging the greatness of God. Something in your life trying to prove himself stubborn, powerful than God. Call upon God and say, Father, I call upon you tonight. Oh Lord, this thing in my life is challenging your name. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will show up. The Lord will fight for you. He will deliver you. He will set you free. And you will have testimonies even to the glory of God in Jesus' name. Brothers, pray. Sisters, pray. And the Lord will bless you. He will answer your prayers in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. Whatever is challenging God in your life tonight, the Lord is right here. And he will fight for you as we pray in Jesus' name. Let us pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you because you are a powerful God. You are awesome. You are great. You are mighty. And Lord, tonight, we have seen from the pages of the scriptures how great you are. Oh Lord, tonight, in the life of everyone listening to my voice right now, whatsoever in their life that is challenging your authority in their life, oh Lord, I pray, fight for them in Jesus' name. Lord, you fought for children. Meshach and Abednego, you showed yourself to Nebuchadnezzar. Oh Lord, I pray tonight, whatsoever is challenging your authority in their life, Oh, Lord, I pray, fight for them, Lord, and deliver them in Jesus' name. You fought for Ezekiel and the people of Judah. Lord, I declare tonight, whatsoever the enemy is bringing to their life, that is challenging your authority. Oh, Lord, I pray, fight for them, oh, Lord, in Jesus' name. When the people of God were at the Red Sea, do you look through the pillars of cloud and pillars of fire? Oh, Lord, when the money was be becoming to, to break, and then you took out the wheels of the Egyptians and the chariot, all the horses and the chariots of, the, of, of, of Pharaoh. And then you fought for them. You delivered the people of God out of the hands of their captors, of their, of their enemies. Oh Lord, you fought for them. Whatsoever is challenging your authority in the life of your people. Is this sickness? Oh Lord, I pray. Fight for them and heal them in Jesus' name. Whatsoever is challenging your authority in the life of your children, long-standing problems, pains in their bodies, oh Lord, whatsoever it is, oh Lord, psychological, spiritual, physical, and it's not making them to make progress. Tonight, oh Lord, I declare, fight for them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Set them free, oh Lord, I pray. Give them testimonies, Lord, in Jesus' name, that they will all come and they will say, he has done all things well in Jesus' name. Everyone will see the wonders of your power in their lives in Jesus' name. Those who are looking upon to you, they want to get married. Oh Lord, fight for them. Help them destroy the yoke of the enemies out of their lives in Jesus' name. Those who are praying for children, oh Lord, I pray deliver them. Remove that yoke and that blemish in their life and that difficulties in childbearing and set them free in Jesus' name. Those who are praying for a career job, they have been looking upon to you, the one who will establish them. Oh Lord, I pray, set to them and provide a wonderful job for them in Jesus' name. Those who are looking upon to you, they are having problem difficulties in their family. They don't even know where the problems are coming from. And it's like I see if this one is I am right. The one is the other one is say I'm right. Oh Lord, I pray is the enemy that is making them to miss, to have misunderstanding. Lord, I scatter the plans of the enemy in that family in Jesus' name. Let your peace reign over them in the name of Jesus. Whatever is the confusion in the life of those people and they are looking up unto you, oh Lord, for solution. Lord, I pray, fight for them and grant them solution in Jesus' name. As many who are looking up unto you tonight, they are praying for your deliverance. They are asking for your help. Lord, I declare tonight, help them, oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Fight for them, oh Lord. Set them free, oh Lord. And do great things in their lives in Jesus' name. Show up in their life as a mighty one in value and the God of heaven and earth, the Almighty in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because we believe you have answered our prayers. In Jesus' name, we pray. A louder amen.
It is well with you in Jesus' name. The Lord is there with you. You begin to see the manifestation of his power and his greatness in your life in Jesus' name. And your testimony will be, he has done all things well. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Don't forget on Sunday, we're coming together for the Sunday worship service right here, 9 o'clock in the morning, and I will see you all on Sunday in Jesus' name. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. Enjoy your blessings. It is well with you in Jesus' name. Amen.